Hi there everybody and welcome to this video. Uh, today we're going to talk about integration between Business Central and customer engagement. Um, so these are two of the products which sit on the Dynamics stack, uh, the Dynamics offering from Microsoft and you can integrate them out of the box. Um, so I should say that everything you're going to see today is out of the box and um, you can put bespoke integration in of course if you need to um, and whether we go with out of the box integration or bespoke integration depends on a few different things I guess we'd need to speak to the customer and um, determine what was the best option for them. So just before we get started today, I want to just take a moment to say thank you for, for everyone and uh, your support on the channel. Um, a few of you guys have reached out to me just to ask me to do um, a few different videos covering a few different scenarios on a few different application areas on LinkedIn, on WhatsApp, on YouTube as comments. Um, I am getting around to all of the videos eventually, guys. I've got a list of things um, which I want to put onto the channel. Um, and rest assured, I do add them all on to my list and we'll get around to them all um, eventually. So uh, please um, bear with me and uh, we will eventually get everything that you guys are reaching out to me um, about onto, uh, onto the channel. Okay, so back to today's session. Uh, what we're going to focus on is integration between BC and um, CE. So uh, we'll do sessions later on sort of how the integration actually works. Um, but for today, we're focusing we're focusing on just getting that integration set up between the um, two different environments. Uh, so a few things that we need to do in Business Central. Um, what I'm going to do is just search for the first setup page here, which is called uh, Dataverse Connection Setup. Um, so I have enabled the integration on this um, environment already, but I just disabled it for the purposes of this demo. So some of the fields that you see here may look a little bit different to those which you have in your environment. But essentially what I would do is just go to my assisted setup here and um, see it's giving me the warning here to say you've already completed the setup um, to, uh, to, to enable this. Do you want to run it again? Obviously, you wouldn't see that if it was the first time that you were uh, that you were doing this. But I'm just going to say yes um, on this prompt. Um, and it just gives me um, sort of a wizard which I can use to flick through and just enable the um, integration between my BC and my CE environment. Um, so virtual tables is uh, one of the new things, uh, fairly new, which has come in um, around the uh, integration between BC and CE. So we will do uh, another video on that at some point in the um, future. But for now, what I'm going to do is just click next here. Um, I'm just going to accept the disclaimer. You'll notice that I need to accept that. I won't read what that says, but I'm just going to say next here. Um, and what I then get is basically a lookup to um, a, a URL, which I can provide. And as the wizard's asking me here, um, this is the URL of the Dataverse environment um, that we want to connect to. Um, so I can drill down here if I have more than one environment. I don't in this particular scenario. So this is just a CDX demo environment that I've set up. So I've only got one Dataverse environment here. Um, otherwise, if I had multiple, I could drill down. Um, so this is a really important step. What I need to do next here is sign in with an admin user. Um, so it won't let me go forward unless I'm an administrator user on this particular tenant. Um, so I'm just going to say sign in with admin user and I'm going to sign in with my CDX user account. And what this will do in the background is it will just authenticate and make sure that I am an admin user. Um, so I, th I think this, this means that you have to be a global admin on the tenant. Um, this may change in the future, but as we're setting up today, um, I believe the user has to be a global admin. If you're not a global admin, you won't have the sort of permissions that you need to do what this wizard is doing in the background. So 
Um, in the background, it goes away and installs some solutions on the Dataverse environment. And obviously, if you're not an admin user, it won't let you do that. And uh, you can see here it's worked because it tells me that the administrator is signed in. If you are not an administrator user, you would realize at this point it would error and say you're not an admin user. Um, so just bear that in mind. Uh, okay, so let me go ahead and press next here. And it would take a little bit longer, obviously, if uh, we were doing that for the first time. So mine just flicked through there where it said getting things ready for you. This isn't the first time that I've done this, as I mentioned, on this environment, just to save a bit of time. I set it up and then I disabled and now we are re-enabling. Um, so just um, with the page that we eventually get to once the uh, integration is set up there, uh, we would normally choose an ownership model here of, uh, of team and that is recommended by um, Microsoft there as well. And you can choose this Boolean here if you want to enable the connection without synchronizing the data. So I'm just going to mark that as yes. I guess it depends, you know, this environment um, is just a Cronus environment. It's just a demo environment. So I don't need to set up that sort of synchronization when we're going um, when we're going and setting this up here. But you can choose to, to synchronize um upon setup if you want to but you can do that later as well and i think yeah i, I prefer to do that afterwards but uh, it's up to you on that one okay so let's press next and it's just giving me another prompt to say we're getting things ready for you so it's just basically striking up that connection between ce and bc again um, and we'll just give it a few minutes to run through this um okay and uh there we go, so it tells me that the um, integration is set up, but I do have another prompt here to say set up virtual tables. And again, I mentioned that I had done this previously. Um, so previously when I did this, it told me here that the Business Central virtual table app was not installed. Um, and if that was the case, it wouldn't let me finish this wizard. So if you're doing this on your environments, guys, obviously, hopefully in a sandbox environment first, you would need to go away and install the Business Central Virtual Table app. Um, so this is something that you have to do uh, in the Dataverse environment, and this is to do with the connection between the two systems. So uh, you have to do that, and once that's done, um, you can go away and you can finish this particular wizard. So once we've done this, this will take us back to the Dataverse connection setup window. Um, so we'll just give it a few minutes and that should take us back to the Dataverse connection setup page that we originally started this step on. Um, and we'll just see um, that the synchronization was enabled. Um, and just whilst that's working away in the background there, guys, um, we do have to do one other step. Um, which we're going to do after this. Um, okay, here we go. So uh, we've got the Dataverse connection setup page that we were on here, and we can see that the enable data synchronization Boolean is now marked as yes, and the enable virtual tables is also marked as yes. So we've got some fields here that tell us the Dataverse version, the solution version um, of, uh, of the integration that we have, and we can test connection here as well. I guess we can cover that in uh, in another video. So focusing on getting the connection set up, we are now connected from our Business Central environment to the Dataverse environment that we nominated when we were setting up that integration. Okay, so there's one other step that we need to do if we want to integrate other entities such as your sales orders. So what we need to do is connect Business Central to another area within Dataverse. So if I search for Dynamics connection setup within my Business Central environment, the Dynamics connection setup allows us to, to transact with sales orders between CE and BC and equally we can do things like send quotes from CE to BC and send invoices back from BC to CE as well. Um, so if you want to be able to do those sorts of transactions um, we need to enable this second step. If it's just the uh, attachment of customers and other master data you can just leave it as the Dataverse connection setup so the step that we just did. 
but in most cases, I guess you would do both of these because you would not only integrate customers and accounts, uh, vendors and so on between CE and BC, but you'd also want sales orders and uh, sales invoices and um, quotes to be integrated as well. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and continue with this step here. Once again, I will say that I enabled this um, um, sort of previously, but I've just disabled it um, um, so we can show you guys on the YouTube video how it works. And uh, what I should say is that you must do the two steps in this order. So this Microsoft Dynamics 365 connection setup page comes second to the Dataverse connection setup. So Dataverse first, then Microsoft Dynamics 365 connection setup. I mean, BC won't let you do it in any other order. It will say you have to do it in that order anyway, but just as an FYI. Um, so here on this page, we can see my Dynamics 365 URL is the same as the one that we entered um, earlier on the other um, Dataverse wizard. But I'm just going to go into my assisted setup here. And again, I've got a message that says you've already completed this setup. Do you want to do it again? I'm just going to say yes. And here I've just got a window saying this is my D365 sales URL. So I'm going to press next. And it tells me here to enable the connection, just choose finish. So there's a fewer amount of steps in this particular wizard, but it does say again, hey, you may be asked to specify an administrative user account in 3365 sales, right? So again, that comes down to the global admin user account, but I'm just going to hit finish there and uh, just let this run in the background. So just whilst that is running here, guys, just to reiterate this part of the connection to CE, is focusing around sales document processing. So if you didn't want to set up integration for sales document processing, you wouldn't need to do this step. Um, you would only need to do the first step, which is around master data synchronization. Um, okay, so we've got a few more different options available to us now on this particular page. So if I come down here, it gives me um, the D365 BC web client URL, which is where we are right now. Um, I've got a version for my D365 sales, and I can do other things like automatically create sales orders, processing of sales quotes, and we can enable bi-directional sales orders um, integration if we want to. And uh, there's a few other sort of settings here, which we will run through in later videos. But today we're focusing on just getting that connection set up between the two environments. Okay, so now that we've done those two steps, um, we can just review some of the other pages here in BC. If I go to a page here called Integration Table Mappings, um, we have a bunch of uh, records on this table, and these are the records, the entities which we are integrating between BC and CE. So I'm not going to run through this whole table, but it's just here for your reference. For example, we've got the customer table, which is um, the customer table in BC, but it's the accounts table in CE. And you can see here the direction is bi-directional, but we can change all this sort of stuff, guys. It's probably one for um, another video. Um, so then we have item product table, we've got sales order down here, we've got posted sales invoices, you've got all the different entities that you can integrate between BC and CE available here. Bear in mind this is out of the box integration, it is possible to add your own tables to this particular list if you wanted to do that, but you would need to do development in order to achieve that, so um, we, won't we won't run through that one. On, uh, on this particular video. Um, so we do have other things here available to us like an integration synchronization job log. We can uh, run a full sync just to make sure all, all records are synced. Uh, probably gonna cover that in uh, a different video. And uh, if I just move to another page in BC here called the job queue entries, what we get on the job queue entries is a list of new jobs created as part of the steps that we just carried out. These are all for code unit 5339, which focus on the integration between BC and CE. So basically, um, these are jobs which run to synchronize the different entities that we've got. So we've got here 
um, a sync job for customers, sync job for vendors, contacts, I scroll down, we've got here ones for sales orders and all of the other different entities. And obviously um, you can change the frequency of these job queue entries, how often they run. Um, we'll do another video on the job queue entries um, just so you can see that one, but this is just um, to show you the jobs that get generated that carry that sync um, process across. Um, so I think that's all guys that you need to do to get the integration set up. We will do some more videos just focusing on other areas such as syncing records, best practices when you're syncing records, and then we'll start doing other videos on sending sales quotes, sales orders between CE and BC, and then invoices back from BC to CE. Um, but that's all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you guys find it useful. Thank you very much and uh, I'll see you on the next one.